Okay, everybody, welcome to another Ignite Visibility University. Today, I am so excited because we have a tech CEO co-founder on, and uh, he's got a really, really interesting, cool dating app product that I'm excited to talk to him about today. So today, I have Sacha Nassan on, and he's coming to us all the way from the UK. Sacha, how are you doing today? Hi, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm doing all right. It's just we're going back to typical London weather, rain and and gray sky <laughs> so uh, other than that everything's good you know the only thing we can complain on which i'm not english but british people like it is the weather yeah absolutely i think last time i was over there in the uk i remember going to a pub that was underground it was incredibly dark and i had some moist fish and chips and kind of a flat beer but it was still really really fun but i think that's kind of how, how, it, how it goes over there a little bit yes that's the typical thing you get on like a thursday night beer and fish and chips <laughs> yeah absolutely well i'm really excited to have you here today um and and the re one of the reasons is because i i think that it's fascinating the new product that you've created uh for a couple of reasons i'm going to tell you a, a, a little bit about why why I think that in a minute, but tell us about this new um, product that you've come out with for the dating world and how it's changing things a little bit. Sure, absolutely. So Blindly is essentially a blind dating app where we get two strangers who don't know each other, but they match certain criteria. They jump on a three minute blurred video call. So it's just like we're speaking now, except that it's blurred and it's on the app. It's three minutes. So it's a bit of a blind dating and a speed dating mixed into each other. And this blur filter that is in between adds this element of gamification where you can discover the other person and judge based on personality rather than how the person looks. Of course, you can unblur during the call and only after the call, we ask if they want to match, not before. Really, really interesting. I, I, I uh, actually met my wife online through uh, uh, oh, match.com. Okay. So uh, that was a, a long time ago. I've been married for a while and I got, I got a couple kids. But, you know, I love this concept because I was watching a show here in the U.S. that was called Love is Blind. And what right. happened is uh, these people literally fell in love with each other, like in love with each other before they even saw them. And then uh, they eventually saw them and then a lot of interesting things happened happen but it's it's a little bit like that in some ways right yeah absolutely and actually there's a Marie Claire which is a woman magazine they described us as love is blind in real life um, the funny thing is we we launched before love is blind and we were always using the hashtag on social media hashtag love is blind and suddenly when they launched they just conquered that hashtag with their millions of dollars in marketing and and that's it but there's always proof that we were there before them <laughs> Very cool. Well, I'm glad that you were first to market there. That's, that's yeah. awesome. And I just, I find it, I find it really interesting. So, I mean, what, what type of things do you see with people who are interacting and they can't see the other person? Do you feel they develop more of a connection in that way first? I mean, is there any subtleties that you've seen in this way of dating that, you know, you think people would be interested in? Yeah, sure. Actually, um, it depends on what your intentions are. If you're using another dating app, for example, Tinder, your intentions might be something more casual. And in that sense, you're probably not going to look at how that person looks. But if you're looking for something more meaningful, right, looking for a relationship or something even deeper than that, maybe a marriage, then you're going to be judging based on different inputs. There's going to be how the person behaves, what's the body language, what's their accent, how do they speak, and how they look is part of the formula, but it shouldn't be the first impression you know like we say don't judge a book by its cover that's what the app's going to make here you're going to see if the opposite person is if i'm a guy and i'm speaking to a girl if she's a brunette she's blonde how does she behave what's her voice like but only after some time you're going to be able to unblur and people like that concept we, we have emails with people saying oh, this is really cool this is like love is blind just the way you described it um so it's been picked up pretty positively so far very cool. Okay. So, you know, you've kind of started this journey and you're up to tens of thousands of people using it. It's gotten a ton of press and I'm really impressed that you've been able to do this, you know, as an entrepreneur. And I think a lot of people aspire to have a growing uh, tech company where they also get to help people at the same time. Talk to me a little bit about like what that journey's looked like from the startup perspective. Like how did it start? How did you get momentum? And then how did you start getting coverage in these big publications like T TechCrunch? Yeah, so the journey, I mean, I think it's very typical to anyone else. You get a lot of criticism at the beginning. Friends saying, are you sure this is going to work? I don't think people want the dating app where they can't see the other person. Uh, but sometimes, I don't know, we, we, we just had this conviction and we had heard stories of people being catfished and 
where they go on a date with someone from dating profile who's much older that actually happened to my cousin and, and a few other friends of mine. So we're like, no, we're going to do this because we can develop this ourselves. So we didn't need to raise money, which was very helpful. So we're going to just try it on an MVP, which means a prototype, put it out in the market, try to put a bit of free marketing behind it, meaning press and see how the reaction is. And that's how we did. So we worked a lot on it. We iterated the product a lot. We adjusted it a lot based on beta feedback that we received. For example, uh, what I didn't mention is that when you are in this three minute call, uh, if it's a heterosexual call, the woman controls the blur. Because back when we had a beta, we used to have that both genders could control the blur. And the first thing men would do was to unblur. And, and the other gender always has to accept or reject. But the first, men, the first thing men would do was to unblur the, the blur of the call. So then we said, okay, well, hold on. We're going to iterate that and give woman control of the blur in a sense to make this a more female friendly app. And today that's how the app is. So the woman controls the percentage and the guy can accept or reject. And if it's a case of a homosexual call, then the one who accepted the call, we see as he or she having taken a higher risk. So he or she has control of, of the blur. So, you know, it's a lot of feedback and criticism, iterating product, but once we were out there and we were past beta, then the focus one on, was on what you mentioned, getting the word out, you know, spurring the marketing. The problem with dating app is it's very hard to build in some kind of virality because people don't like sharing so much on Facebook and social media about their dating life. It's a bit private. You know, you'll, you'll speak about it with a few friends. So there's going to be a small word of mouth, but unless you're at the scale of the big players, there's, it's going to be very hard to generate virality. So we said, okay, well, how can we add something there? Because we didn't have any money from investors. It's going to give us marketing. And the focus was on press. And the way we did is, is we collected different, very relevant journalists that had written about relationships or sex or online dating, whatever it is, something that's relevant, touching our area. We just put everything in a Google sheet with the name, the email, the publication they write for. And then for e we had about 300 names. And then for each of these journalists, um, even small publication, you know, small to big, we went and looked for their public profile picture, which means like a Twitter profile picture or LinkedIn profile picture, whatever it is. We saved that picture manually and we manually blurred that picture, ah. saved it again. And then when we did the pitching, um, we sent the first pitch to them, which was just a normal email, which probably gonna ignore, you know, they received thousands of pitches a day. But then the first follow up we did, and that's, I guess, our little secret, we added that personalized picture of them in the email because then we had a way to stand out from the crowd because if they're just kind of delete, 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 and suddenly they see a picture of them that's very like, hold on, what is this? And then this kind of led to two reactions. People said, this is weird. Why are you using my picture? You know, and, and then in that case, we apologized. We said, well, we use the public picture. It's just a way to catch your attention. And then the other group said, wow, this is interesting. Tell me more. And that's how we actually got our first um, article, which was TechCrunch. So straight from that big list, we got the big dog. Um, and then from TechCrunch, a few other publications started reaching out to us saying, hey, we read about you in TechCrunch. So Gizmodo reached out. They wanted to speak about it. Um, and then we continued doing this. Uh, and, and it led some, so, to some small articles. But then what helped us is or was COVID-19. Because we had launched in late 2019. And COVID-19 happened in the Western world around February, March. And suddenly people started reading about this new dating app that is that TechCrunch had written about, and it's super relevant because we were there with video dating. The big ones, Tinder, Bumble, they didn't have video dating at that time. It wasn't their pipeline. And today they have it, but because COVID-19 had accelerated it, back then they didn't have it. So they started also reaching out to us. Can you guys tell more about that? Um, and then that's how it kind of, you know, led one article to the other. And we got mentioned in Forbes, we got mentioned in Wall Street Journal as an app where you can check the chemistry with someone on video dating. Um, Business Insider, Esquire, Fox, many more. I love it. You know what I love the most? I love that you took the time to develop the right targeted list. And then you didn't just send them an email. Hey, you know, we've got this cool thing. Check it out, right? You, you were unique about it. You were really, really unique about it. Um, quickly, so that's how I became a contributor to Entrepreneur Magazine. You know, I, I reached out to the, the contributing editor there 
didn't want to talk to me, wouldn't really, you know, chat with me. And just by yeah. um, sending him something super unique and coming up with a unique pitch, you know, I found out he really liked American Ninja Warrior. It's like this kind oh, of thing yeah. here where you, you, uh, you know, you do like a challenge with, with a bunch of other people to try to become a, a Ninja Warrior, basically. I sent him a water bottle with that on it. He loved it. He had written something on it. And then that, that allowed us to kind of become good friends, right? And so, so he appreciated that I put in the time. But you put in the time and you made something unique and it allowed you to stand out in from the inbox. And had you not done that, that entire campaign could have fell 100% flat. So how did you like come up with the idea to do that? I mean, was that just something that, you know, you were just thinking about on your own? Were you working with somebody else who, who had a, some PR background? No, uh, I was just on my own. I was working with my co-founder, Glenn, who's also my first cousin. Um, and we're just thinking and then, you know, we thought about the app and what does the app do? It gets you on a blurred video call. So I was thinking, well, how can I present the concept to a journalist without just writing it? Because they're probably not going to read it. How can I present it visually? And then we're like, okay, well, instead of making it a video, why don't I just take a picture of them, blur it, add it as an attachment. And then one, that catches their attention and two, it conveys the message of the app. So now you've kind of, you got some traction, tens of thousands, you, you want to focus more on growth. You know, what are you thinking about next? You know, how are you going to continue to get the word out outside of um, just doing basic press? Or are you going to just stay 100% focused on the press side? No. So, I mean, press is always useful, but it is temporary after all. You know, it, it gives you downloads for a few days, a week after, but then it goes down. Um, so we do have some organic stuff. We do have blog posts. We do some social media stuff not in paid or organic because we don't have the money for that um and and that helps that helps us bring users um but it still doesn't give us the big break i think the main thing and one of the things i've learned with the dating industry is that you need a lot of money behind a brand to be built in the dating world and that's how you see it from from tinder or bumble they had big money behind them they were hosting events sponsoring events you know doing influencers partnerships back then even um, and that's tough when you're a small bootstrap startup. So we're now at this point thinking, okay, how can we do, you know, we can either try to raise money, get more money behind the marketing, go it like that, or we can do some guerrilla marketing where we try to find a creative way to get in front of many people where we maximize the output for a minimum or even zero input. Um, and, and that's not an easy solution to find. So we're still thinking, you know, what's the best way to make the most noise? I think a perfect example, I'm not sure if you guys watch it in the US, there's the Champions League final, which is football or soccer, if you call it there. And there was this woman who um, called, she, she, who, who was representing an adult brand called Vitalik. She went into the final games, watched by hundreds of millions of people in, in Europe. She went into the pitch with a bikini, blonde woman, very hot, with the logo. And after about 10 seconds, the security guards stopped her. But she was there on live TV with the logo. And she was fined 13,000 pounds or $13,000, I don't remember. But hundreds of millions of people watched the brand, which meant a few million visits of the websites and a few million extra Instagram followers on that. And that's a perfect example, because if you present someone, you know, a marketing leader, you're going to pay $13,000, but you're going to get millions of impressions they're gonna say yes straight away. So I'm not saying I'm going to jump into a pitch, but we're looking for the sort of ideas that, that are similar to those. All right, keep an eye out at the uh, English Premier League soccer games for Sacha jumping out onto the field. I'm a big soccer player too. Yeah, it's really, really interesting and really exciting. I'm, I'm super impressed with what you've done so far and been able to do that from a, a gorilla, you know, perspective. And then you're gonna have this, this big decision to make. The big decision becomes, do you do series A? Do you, do you raise money? Do you put that pressure on yourself? And then, you know, do you start going into, uh, you know, Facebook ads and Google ads and app downloads, or, you know, would you take a, a different approach where you're doing more of a content marketing play? Like, you know, Red Bull's created an app that just basically creates all the best type of content that all of their customers would like to see, or would you um, stay more kind of that, that influencer side um, or try to create things that are viral and build a company that way. That is the beauty of the entrepreneurial journey. But I will tell you that there's probably uh, going to be a very good amount of people who are watching this right now who might just be a little bit interested in a company like yours that's had some some really great traction are, are you interested in talking to other people right now about opportunities absolutely absolutely we're open to that 
Awesome. Okay. So a couple other things, you know, where can people kind of find out more about the app? You know, are, if they want to jump in and try it, where should they go and, and look? And then where can people find out more about you online? Sure. So um, we have the website blindly.com. So that's B-L-I-N-D-L-E-E. -E. Um, but if you type blindly in the App Store uh, or the Google Play Store, you know, whether you have an iPhone or, or an Android device, you will find it there. It's, um, you should be able to find it under blindly. We have our website, as I mentioned, you have our social media stuff on there. Um, and that's basically how you start. You just create an account and start a call with someone or wait to be called. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on today. Everybody, if you'd like to ask a question to Sacha or check out any of the stuff that he's done, you can go ahead and leave a comment below. And Sacha, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, speak with us today a little bit about Thank your entrepreneurial you. journey. Have a great day. Thank you very much for having me.